Hey there, today's video is actually going to be a fairly quick one. The reason being, I just got something in the mail that I'm excited to show you and I'm going to do a quick overview on. And what I got was the Myop Smart Trigger. This is a high speed trigger that's going to allow you to do a whole lot of shots that you probably wouldn't easily be able to do normally. Before I start, why don't you check out this new intro I made, okay? If you had three seconds, why don't you let me know what you think of that new intro, just click right here. So the MyOps trigger is a device you actually attach to your camera, and what it does allow is controlling your camera or attaching it to your flash, controlling your flash. If you check out the box here, there's several things it can do. Uh, the core ones I wanted to get it for was for lightning photography, because I like doing lightning photography quite a bit, and doing it the manual way of clicking with a remote trigger all the time is, uh, is a bit tedious and difficult. The next one is sound mode. This allows you to take a photo as soon as a sound over a certain decibel is, uh, is heard by the device, which can be used in actually, you wouldn't believe, a wide variety of, uh, of photography. Uh, this one is actually gonna be really cool. Uh, you could also do time-lapse mode, which will allow you to do uh, time-lapse videos and also do star trail uh, pictures. And uh, HDR mode will also make things do a little easier for HDR. There's a few other modes and, uh, and functions it could do, and you can connect to this device with your smartphone. In the box, you're gonna get a few things. First one will be the smart trigger itself. Uh, I'll show you how to use this in a moment. It's actually very easy to use. Has a good interface on the screen for you to uh, set all the functions, or you can connect to it with your smartphone with Bluetooth. You'll get a cable to connect to your flash. This is for your external camera flash. This is very useful for doing different kinds of shots where you wanna have the flash uh, that's triggered separate from the camera and uh, the smart trigger will be able to do that for you. You're going to get a USB charging cable. Nothing too exciting here. You probably have tons of these that uh, you could already use to charge the device. And finally, you're going to get the cable that connects to your camera. And I want to talk about this very quickly for a second. All cameras have a different way to connect to its remote control connection. You need to make sure that the cable you get is correct for your camera. You'll notice on their website, they actually have a drop down where you select what cable type. What you need to do is look at the chart that has the different camera brands and the models, find your brand and model under what category of cable it is and order it with that cable. For example, I have a Canon 5D and this is the connection, three prong connection that's gonna connect to my camera. You do not wanna get one for a different type of Canon that doesn't use this cable. This was the C1. If you get the wrong cable, it's not going to connect to your camera and you have to order a separate cable from them or from a third party seller on Amazon. So I wanted to show you very quickly how this device will work. So a few things to know with this device. Uh, first thing, uh, with this little part right here, you can actually attach it to the uh, hot shoe for your flash on your camera. So instead of having the flash on there, you just slide it right on your camera. Or you could attach it right to a tripod because it's threaded to connect to any standard tripod connector. Or you could have it sitting on the ground right beside your camera, right beside your flash, so it doesn't need to be connected to anything uh, physically for stability. On the left side of the device, you're going to have this uh, cover which is going to connect to your various ports. The key ones I've used so far is the, uh, this one here, the middle one to connect to your flash. This one will connect to your camera. And this is to connect to your USB to charge it. Note that this actually comes with a removable battery, and this is brilliant. You can buy additional removable batteries from uh, the Miops company, and I like this for one key reason. If you're using this heavily and you're out in the field, you can have a spare battery with you to throw that in and keep on going. Unlike some of the other triggers out there, uh, for example, the Pluto trigger, that has a built-in battery and you can't remove it. So once the charge is dead and you're out in the field, you're done shooting unless you have some way to charge the device. Also, as we know with a lot of devices, batteries tend to die over time. With the Pluto trigger, when the battery is dead, it's unsure whether you're gonna be able to replace it. Given that it's made in China, I'm gonna guess the odds are pretty low. Since you can get a replacement for this one, you're not gonna have a concern about that. You could just order a bunch and you'll be set to go for quite a while. So once you have your device connected, you just turn it on with the power button up here. The screen is actually decent. It's fairly bright and it's fairly easy to use if you're just using the uh, interface on here. You use the uh, left and right buttons to scroll through what function you want. The uh, middle left button is uh, menu or back button. 
and the uh, middle right button is to select your options. So the options you'd have is lightning, sound, time lapse, bulb ramp, laser, HDR, uh, do-it-yourself setup mode, and different scenario modes you can set up. So the DIY, uh, DIY and scenario, I believe you can actually set up very specific things. You can actually use other kinds of sensors I've heard with this device. I haven't tried that yet. So that you can actually have a wide range of how your camera or flash is triggered. So uh, lightning, I'll just give two examples, probably the easiest one. Lightning is going to be based off of it detecting how bright uh, light is in, uh, in its presence or comes into the scene from the, uh, the default. You can adjust the sensitivity with the sensitivity with the left right. Uh, again, I'll say I haven't used this one. And once you're done, you select the right inner button. So light mode is running. So if a bright light actually did uh, come into uh, the sensor here, which is right up there, it would trigger the camera to take a photo uh, instantaneously. Fantastic for lightning. I haven't tried it yet, but conceptually fantastic for lightning yet. Uh, I look forward to doing that. I think there's going to be some storms this coming weekend where I live, so I will have to try this out if I can. The other one I've been recently using is sound. So you could do something like this. You want to set the sensitivity to sound to whatever level it's going to be. Uh, then here you have uh, another option, millisecond delay. So that's after it hears a sound based on the sensitivity, will it take the photo instantaneously or will it take, take a while? And as you could see, you could really ramp up from zero milliseconds to 999, which is really one second. So a one second delay from when the sound is made. Uh, if you want to do 500, which is half a millisecond, uh, half a second. Uh, really depends on the type of photography and what you're doing. And uh, the lock, I believe, is locking these settings in this uh, configuration. And if you just say we did that, and lock off, delay of zero and 90 seconds, we do this. Okay, that's about the sound level. As you can see, and as I'm speaking, the light's going on there. That means the sensor has been triggered. So I've used this setting already, and what I've done is connected this to my flash, and I've set this for a water balloon pop. What that entails is really me setting up my camera, pointing at a balloon that's hanging from a static point, making sure I get the focus and everything right, getting a flash set up in a different area, uh, pointing at the balloon, not on the camera, but off to the side or to the back, uh, turning off all the lights once I'm ready, and then when I pop the balloon, that sound, will trigger this, will trigger the flash. I'll have my camera on at that time a two or three second exposure because it was dark, I, I could do that. And the flash will capture, uh, like in my image, the water just starting uh, its descent downward. Fantastic photos. There's so many other things you can do with this too, whether it's gonna be popping balloons with darts or air guns or other different ways breaking glass and seeing the, the shattering effect when the glass, when it hears the sound. Uh, lots of different things you can do with this. So I'm probably going to do a whole series of different videos and different things you can do with this over the, the summer. And uh, you know, along with the other videos I'm going to put out there. But if you're interested in seeing something specific with me using this trigger, let me know in the comments below and I will try to get to it. So if you want to learn more, go to the link below to go to the MyOp site or go to Amazon and subscribe, share and like this video. Have a great one.